And you are one of the leading ladies of the 90s. What do you remember about Martin? He came to my house and he was like, didn't I tell you you're going to be my leading lady? You need a footstool. Thank you. Craziest fan mail you ever got. There was one fool that would write me every single day and said that he wanted me to send him pictures of my feet. Damn! And even damn Gina. Damn Gina. People say damn Gina all the time. It's the craziest thing. But I don't mind. I love it. I love that people revere it so much. We never thought in a million years people would consider us iconic or that it would last or stand the test of time. We are talking about the leading ladies of the 90s. <laughs> and you are one of the leading ladies of the 90s, Thank 80s you. and 90s. Thank you. What do you remember about Martin when you first got that show? I had already gotten another sh uh, pilot that had been picked up mm -hmm. for like seven episodes. He came to my house and he was like, didn't I tell you whatever I get, if it's a movie or a TV show, you're gonna be my leading lady. I really want you to do, I can't believe you got me begging you. And I was like, but Martin, I thought you was just playing. <laughs> So you didn't believe him when he no, said... No, because everybody says that. And then, what was even more interesting, Tashina, yes. who I've known since I was 12 years old, had just come out to California mm. because she was uh, during pilot season, so she was auditioning and had just auditioned for Pam. Oh. And so when he walks and he sees Tashina, he says, what are you doing here? Not knowing that she was already picked. And so she goes, she's my best friend. You know, she's, I'm staying at her house until, you know, pilot season is over. He goes, okay, I, okay, Tisha, please. And so I was like, even though something else was already picked up in my soul, I knew that this was the thing that I needed to do. So. Why? Something, to, God, I don't know. I just felt like this, even though this was just a pilot, I felt like it was the right thing. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be the right thing. It, much bigger than any of us could ever have imagined. I never ever thought that we would be iconic. Like, yes, it's 100. engraved in the yes, culture. Yes, it is. But even more interesting. I mean, I found out we're in the Smithsonian. We're all shocked. Me, Martin, Tashina, Carl. Like, we were just going to work and making people laugh. We never thought in a million years people would consider us iconic or that it would last or stand the test of time. How often do people just yell? Gina! Yes, baby? Gina! My son does it every single day of my life. Gina, can you go make me something to eat? Uh, so but I don't mind when people call me that because it means that, you know, they really, it means something to them, you know? How did you help craft that character of Gina? Well, um, you know, I think everybody had a hand in it. I told you I had a meeting to get to, but you just had to try out the new bed. You know, Tommy and Tashina and Carl and I, we were all yeah. from the theater. Mm -hmm. And they surrounded all these people from the theater around this one comedian. They had to establish the character as being a strong woman. But then after a while, you know, I got to play with Martin. I learned so much. I learned everything about comedy from the men. So you all had a, a yin and, and a yang, yang that went well, back we so knew beautifully. each other for so long too. Like everybody did. People love to come by that set and just hang out, right? Who were some of the folks who come by? I think everybody in Black Hollywood. I even remember Toni Braxton just coming to sit in the audience and she started singing. Oh, wow. Yeah, Snoop Dogg was actually on the show. It's the D-O-double-G, cause that be me. And one day, Martin and I were standing together and he was just standing there going, I can't believe I'm in Gina's apartment. And I was like, we both looked at each other like, oh. <laughs> That's so cool. I think the hardest thing about doing The Martin Show was not laughing. Well, how did you not laugh? Because there was some, he would do crazy stuff and then you would do crazy stuff. Yeah, it was, it was really hard because I knew my job was to make sure that we caught what magic he was gonna put on the screen. I don't even know why you still here. Step! Me. I will bust your ass off. And if I messed it up by laughing, it would be my bad. I'm really good at, at making sure that I enhance the person next to me and support them. And I could not laugh. Tommy was the worst. <laughs> Tashina would always do stuff like <laughs> 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 That's how she would laugh in the scene. 
under. <laughs> you can hear it though. Right. <laughs> Shut up. Was there a favorite episode that you have of Martin? I would have to say I have two favorite episodes. Okay. One is the plumber episode because I thought everybody's work, we all came together as a group and everybody shined in that episode. I especially love Carl Payne and, and Martin's work in that. <laughs> we really like were a glue at that point. And then another ensemble episode was the first Halloween episode, mm. which mm. he was, you know, scared. And yes. Yeah, it was great. Come on, we're gonna have a seance. Oh no, we're not. Oh, yes, we are. You had crazy, crazy fans when it came to Martin. Yeah, we did. Craziest fan mail you ever got. There was one fool that would write me every single day and said that he wanted me to send him pictures of my feet. No, fool. I'm not doing that. Okay? Wait, and then so no. He wanted pictures of your he feet. He wanted pictures of my feet. He wanted me to send him. And you wouldn't send him the pictures of your Hell feet? Hell no. How look? <laughs> but then there was this one guy that actually showed up. He was sending me stuff to the set. And he actually showed up on the set. And so people don't realize that once you get Tisha there, then she's a different, she's not Gina. Right, she's not Gina. Nah, I ain't Gina. So, uh, 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 <laughs> so and so he I, saw the real Tisha. I was like, you mother. I just started cussing him out. You went off. Yeah, I cussed him out so bad, it scared him. And he ran. <laughs> yeah. And you never saw him again? Nope. Nah. I'm not scared. No. So you don't need Martin again, I'm going to hurt you. You got that girlfriend? Hey, hey, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it's hard for people to understand now, especially younger people, uh, what yeah. that show meant at the time and to see that kind of representation on the screen, how important it was for folks. We didn't understand how important it was because there were so many other black shows going on at the time, right? Mm -hmm. But what was important was that there were two young African-American people who were in love. You my baby, you my baby, you yeah, my baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We had, you know, Cosby Show representation, but we really had two young people who were having fun discovering each other, discovering life. I think that's what makes it so. There are so many songs about Martin and Gina. How many times have you been mentioned in rap songs? Is that crazy? How about this? I keep millennials around me at all times because you know a girl has to transform and recreate and recreate herself so Tisha keeps her millennial right, right, right. at all times right they were the ones who told me how much the show meant to them and then all the euphemisms that came out of there they even talk to the hand okay so even this like you know talk to the hand stuff that came from I think the butt episode where he I got him a bust of a butt he said I was bushy for giving him a bust of a butt and uh, <laughs> we started doing this in each other's face it was just like ad lib that we were all doing to one another and so the next time it aired people started doing this I was like somebody's gonna get their hand chopped off you can't just do that damn 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 Gina Baby! And even damn Gina. Damn Gina. People say damn Gina all the time. All the time. It's the craziest thing. You get that one some too. I get that all the time. But I don't mind. I love it. I love that people revere it so much. When do you realize this is a real hit? Oh my God. It was the United Negro College Fund. Mm -hmm. It was an event for that. And I think I saw Lawrence Fishburne there. And Lawrence looks at me, he goes, Tisha, I'm so proud of your work. I was like, really? It's a sitcom, what are you talking about? And he goes, Tisha, it's really good. I said, it is? And he goes, yeah, and I was like, are you sure? And he goes, yeah. Wow. And so when someone like that says yes, when someone like that says yes, then it's a yes. Is there going to be a reboot? Everybody's been talking about this, you've been talking about it for a couple of years now that we're gonna have a reboot. It's so hard to say, because one, Tommy's not here. Right. And the other thing is schedule. It literally boils down to schedule. Every single one of us, thank God, is still working. Okay, well, let me ask you this. What? Has everyone reconciled, kissed, and made up? Because I know there were some tough times. There were some tough times. Yes, we have. We all sat down, and now it's like a year and a half ago. What most people don't know is like three days after I separated, out of the blue, Martin calls me and says, 
I just want to talk to you. Can we meet for lunch? Let's bring Tashina. Let's have lunch and let's all talk. When you go into lunch and you're like, no. When he called me, I screamed. I, I hadn't seen him since the last day of the show. And we got to talk, apologize, love on one another. We were laughing at the end of it. And we got to start appreciating everything that we've all been through. That's what I think really life is all about. You, you go through these dark moments or you go through down moments. And at the time, you don't really realize that this is something that is needed to, to uplift you and make you bigger and better. At the end of it, we are so good. That's great. And we are just supportive of one another, supportive of each other's families. We talk. It's all good. Can I ask you this? Here is everybody back in? Is everybody? I don't know. That's a, is everybody? What the, you're talking about. Okay. Come on, keep it coming, because this is fun. In times like these, how important would it be to hear those voices again? When you're in these kind of situations, you just want to laugh. That's all. And people are gravitating to the show even more because they just want levity. We made an impact and it was a big thing for us. And I do not take it lightly and I'm so grateful that I could ease and heal people with laughter. I'll be right here doing nothing as usual. I want to play this video for you, okay? Okay. This is you. Oh, dear Lord Jesus. It's like one big family. We're like brothers and sisters. We are always, always <laughs> cracking on each other. We just have a ball. We do. We have a ball, and it comes off. What do you remember about that, that girl right there? I just remember wanting to keep it together. What do you mean? Like, I remember wanting to make sure that everybody was good. Everybody on set, from the person who took out trash, to the executive producers. I remember wanting to make sure that everybody felt like we were a cohesive team mm -hmm. and that it was my job to not only learn my lines, but to kind of be like a first lady to make sure that everybody was still laughing and happy when the cameras weren't rolling. But that wasn't pressure anybody else put on me. It was pressure that I put on myself. That's what I see when I look at that. Okay, here's another one that I want to show you. Oh! Why? <laughs> How cool is that? I was 16, 17. I was 17 years old doing Rags to Riches. Yes, and singing the E.T. theme. Oh, wow, that's so crazy. I look so young. By the way, as someone who is multi-talented, you just don't act, you sing, you dance, you do it all. <laughs> Go ahead, give us, finish that, finish the. That <laughs> just made the promo. <laughs> That's the promo. How are you doing? Because there's been a lot of changes in your life. Yeah. So how are you doing? I'm doing really well. You know, single parenthood was an adjustment, right? But I have to say it was the most creative time I've ever had in my entire life. Everything that I ever wanted to create, I did. Will you be ready to date again? No. Why not? Hell no. No, come on. I'm not ready to date nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I said creative. That has nothing to do with all that personal stuff. I am so not ready for that. No? No, because I think I'm still learning who I am and discovering who I am, and I still have a lot of growth and, and, and learning to do. And I don't think that I'm ready for that at all. I'm good. Really? I'm really good. No, really. No. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I just want to concentrate on my growth. I want to concentrate on my spirit. I want to concentrate on all my creates. That's all I want to concentrate on. And my kids. And working. And working. And that, that's the creative part. I've been working my behind off. Come on, now I already have my gift. <laughs> I got my man, all right? Holiday gifts. Your favorite holiday gift. I was going through a really tough time and I had maybe $7 to my name. And I was scared and I was at zero. And I hadn't been at zero in a long time. And I had to choose between getting my kid some toys from Rite Aid for Christmas and a knife so that I could make Christmas dinner. I can't take my last and spend this last on some toys that 
little plastic army men that may not mean anything to him. I'm gonna make Christmas dinner. So I went and I bought the knife for $7 at Rite Aid. And I made Christmas dinner so I wouldn't cut myself. And so the next morning, I'm scared to death. I don't know if my kids are going to be disappointed. They, they went to the tree, they saw their video games. I was like, you guys gotta share them this time, you know? And they're like, it's fine, it's great. They were just so happy and kind. And, and they were like, we got you so much. Like, you didn't have to give me anything. I was, I was freaked out because I was like, where did they get money? And, and, and they were like, they, we pulled our money together and we got you something. And they got me a set of knives. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I burst it into tears. Because they don't understand what has just happened. Like, I always say money's not my god. And the fact that, oh, god, I'm not supposed to do this here. <laughs> the fact that my kids went and got me some knives when I was not in a good place, I, I literally Ugh, Tisha, I cried like a baby, and they were looking at me like, you know, what's wrong? And I was like, no, these are happy tears. Starting over is not always the easiest thing, but it is a necessary thing. It is a beautiful devastation, and I realize that now, and I'm just really proud. That this they is made right me after proud. your breakup, right after your yeah, after your marriage first, mm -hmm. when your marriage broke up, and you had you got nothing. Nothing. No one knows that, but I had nothing nothing in the bank nothing i haven't told anybody that i didn't have anything and that everything was taken i don't want to talk about that so how did you get there you lost everything you had nothing i had some really incredible angels in my life i had people who just loved me where i was without all the glitz and the glam and the everything and they were okay with it and they were okay with loving me the way that I needed to be loved. For the first time in my life, I really had to re-examine me and take care of me and feel the, the tears. The tears are okay. Everybody's talking about mental wellness. Yeah. And that is a real thing. And there's nothing to be ashamed about, especially in the African-American community. We deal with a lot. There's nothing wrong with seeing a therapist. Mm -hmm. Go to a therapist, talk to people, Get through it. You will get through it. You have no idea how strong you are until you're in that fire. I had two reasons not to, other than myself, was my two kids. And I wasn't going to. And now look at me, like I've rebuilt. I'm, I'm doing everything that I've ever wanted to do. And I'm the happiest I've ever been. That makes it so much better. It makes it so good. Right now, no, this like all the life. success and, and life and everything, it makes it so good. It makes it so. Not that I wasn't appreciative before, but I just never did anything for myself. You gotta understand, I've been working since I was seven in acting. Yeah. I've been singing since I was three, but acting since I was seven. And everything was always for everybody else. I was trying to keep my family afloat. At five years old, I made a conscious decision to help my family with bills. That's I thought crazy. that was important. Right? Yeah. But it was always for somebody else. I wasn't worried about work because I was responsible with my gifts that God gave me. But it's really not only about gifts, it's about the effort you put in, right? I utilized my platform to uplift, to try to uplift my, my circumstances, my family, my community. I did everything that I was supposed to do. So I'm just happy. And I continuously look back and appreciate the down moment. Every single day, I look back at where I was on, oh, where, what was I doing this day, 2018? Like, oh my God. I, I'm that, I'm happy, man.